In this lesson, the target states, I can use the order of operations to simplify numerical expressions. Let's break that down a little bit to better understand what each of those parts mean. Well, here's an example of a numerical expression. A numerical expression is made up of numbers and operations. Operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, or exponents. And our goal is to simplify. It simplifies the verb, you do it. And each time you simplify an operation, you're simplifying the numerical expression. But we must remember that every time we have a numerical expression with a variety of operations, it needs to be done in a certain way. Those, that's called the order of operations. For this problem right here, I could get several different answers, but only one is the correct answer. So we might remember PEMDAS. PEMDAS is an easy way to remember what order the operations come in. And it's also a good tool to use if you just write it down on your paper each time you have a complicated numerical expression and use it as a checklist. So let's take a look at PEMDAS and this numerical expression. So first I look at the numerical expression and I ask the question, are there any parentheses? P in PEMDAS stands for parentheses. A parenthesis could look like this or a bracket, something more like this. And sometimes inside the bracket there could be parentheses. Those are called nested parentheses. So in this expression there are parentheses. So I would look into the parentheses and I'd see 2 times 6. There's only one operation, so I'm just going to do it. And to keep track, I'm going to bring my stuff down a little bit, step at a time. 2 times 6 is 12. And I'm going to rewrite the whole expression. So now it's 36 minus what 2 times 6 is, 12, divided by 3. Now I have two more operations. I do not have any exponents. I do not see any powers there. There's no exponents. So I can, can, I can keep moving on, PEMDAS. Multiply and divide. Multiply often looks like a few different things. We have the x or multiplication symbol that looks like that. Oftentimes in algebra especially, we use this symbol, the dot, because it would be less confusing to have a dot next to a variable x. And then oftentimes if we use parentheses, we don't need either of those symbols. So this means 2 times 4. The answer to this is 8. Divide. Divide can look like the old school division symbol or fraction bar. That means 4 divided by 2. We all know what addition and subtraction look like. And here's the trick. Multiplication and division. They come after exponents, but they don't come in one order. Multiplication and division happen from left to right. So multiply does not always come before divide. It's important to remember. So we'll try to look at some problems in this lesson where there are, there are divisions before multiplications and you would do them first. Multiplication and division happen in, from left to right, just as addition and subtraction happen from left to right. But that doesn't matter in this problem because what we have left is subtract and divide. In multiplication and division, there are no multiplications, so division would be my next step. So my next step would be divide. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I'd be left with 36 minus 4, my last operation, which brings me to 32. So I just evaluated or simplified that numerical expression. The answer is 32. So let's try a few more practice problems, and I'm going to give you a few to try on your own. So let's take a look at the first one on the left. It's a big numerical expression. 36 minus 18 divided by 2 times 3 plus 8. So let's not forget PEMDAS. To evaluate this numerical expression, we'd look at it and, and think about PEMDAS. Are there any parentheses? There are not. Are there any exponents? There are not. So I'm done with the P and E in PEMDAS. Are there any multiplications or divisions? There are. And we would do them from left to right. So I know the M in PEMDAS comes before the D. So when we look at our numerical expression, we see 18 divided by 2 times 3. Well, division and multiplication come before subtraction and addition. So I have to do this part of the problem first. I know the M comes before the D, but you do not do the multiplication first. You do your multiplications and divisions from left to right. So this problem, division would come first. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 
and I'm going to rewrite the whole problem. 36 minus 9 times 3 plus 8. So I did division before multiplication because I'm doing it from left to right. So if I go back to PEMDAS, I still have a multiplication. And those come before a subtraction or addition. So I have to finish my multiplications and divisions before I subtract or add. 9 times 3 is 27. So I'm going to rewrite my problem. 36 minus 27 plus 8. Now I'm left with subtraction and addition. I know in PEMDAS, I just finished multiply and divide. I know in PEMDAS, the A comes before the S. But you do not always add before you subtract. And here's an example of that. You do addition and subtraction from left to right. So since at this point in the numerical expression, all I have left is subtraction and addition, I just op operate from left to right. 36 minus 27 is 9. I'm going to rewrite my problem. 9 plus 8, all I have left is addition. 9 plus 8 is 17. So my answer is 17. All right, one more. This one looks complicated. And I guess it kind of is because there's lots of grouping symbols. But let's not forget PEMDAS. And again, it's always a good idea to just jot it down on your paper when you have to evaluate some expressions and use it as a checklist. So are there any parentheses? Yes. In fact, there are nested parentheses. There's the brackets. So I would go inside the brackets and see the parentheses. So the work I'm going to do starts right in here. Now when I look in here, I see add and divide. Well, what comes first, addition or division? Well, division does. So I'm evaluating the inner parentheses, and I see division. It comes before addition. So I'm going to divide first. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So what I'm left with in the parentheses is 4 times 3. And everything else, I'm just going to rewrite to keep track. The brackets are still there. I'm not done with my parentheses. So my next step would be finishing out these parentheses. 4 plus 3 is 7. My brackets are still there because the last thing I'm going to do is cube or use the exponent 3, raise whatever I get out of the bracket to the third power. So all I'm left with inside this bracket is subtraction, so it's 5 to the third power. So when I have an exponent, it's not 5 times 3, it's 5 times itself 3 times. So it's 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5, if I count by 25, 25, 50, 75, 100 is 125. Okay, now here's a few problems for you to try. I want you to click pause, get out your notebook, or take a screenshot of this page and solve these problems. Most of you are probably going to use a paper notebook for these problems, so click pause, copy the problems down, and solve these problems. Show your work. Take them one step at a time and break it down step by step. Remember to jot PEMDAS down on your paper. When you're done with the three problems, click play and we'll go over the answers. And you should check your answers in your notebook. Good luck. Okay, let's go over number one. Remember PEMDAS. I'm just going to write that down really quickly as a reference. Hopefully you jotted it down in your notebook too. 28 minus 4 times 3 divided by 6 plus 4. There's no parentheses. There's no exponents. There are multiplications and divisions. So I'm going to look at those first from left to right. So I see 4 times 3 divided by 6. This part of the problem needs to be done first. So from left to right, the, the multiplication comes first. So it's 12. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. 28 minus 12 divided by 6 plus 4. Multiplying and divide still comes before add and subtract, so I have a division left. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So I'm left with 28 minus 2 plus 4. And at this point, I would just solve it. Addition and subtraction happens from left to right. So 28 minus 2 is 26, plus 4 is 30. So check your answer. How did you do? Number 2. Number 2 is a little more complicated. It's got some more stuff going on. And I want to remember PEMDAS. So I'll squeeze that in over here. 
I have parentheses. So I'm going to go inside the parentheses and I have an exponent. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is the exponent inside the parentheses. 3 squared. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. It's not 3 times 2. 3 squared is 9. I'm going to rewrite the whole problem. I'm still working inside these parentheses, but I got my exponent out of the way. So what do I do next? So inside the parentheses, I'm not done rewriting the problem. Okay, I'm inside the parentheses and I see subtraction and division. Well, multiply and divide comes before add and subtract, so my next step would be to do the division part. And we're going to run out of space, so I'm just going to do the whole parentheses at once. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and to finish this parentheses, my last step would be 9 minus 2. So what would come out of this whole parentheses is 7. So then I'm going to rewrite the rest of the problem. 7 plus 7 times 3. Now I have add and multiply. So I'm done with the parentheses, and I have the simplified problem, and I have add and multiply. Multiply comes before add, so 7 times 3 is 21. So I'm left with 7 plus 21, which is 28. So the answer to number 2 is 28. Okay, last question. Hope you understood the directions. It asks, what order would you do these operations? Just to list them. If I look at this problem and all the operations, what would I do first? So my first step would be to do the exponent. The parentheses might have been a good answer, but you don't do parentheses. It's not an operation. So the operation that would come first is exponent. Maybe you wrote 3 squared because that would be the first thing you would do. What would I do next? Well, if I did 3 squared, I'd still have 9 minus 1. I'd still have parentheses, so my next operation would be subtract. So my second operation would be subtract. So if I subtracted, I'd get 8, and now I'd have 8 divided by 8 plus 4. What would be my third operation? Divide. Because my last and final operation is going to be add. Okay, how'd you do? Just remember, be prepared tomorrow to show your teacher your notes on this video and the three problems you tried. I would like to thank for not jumping on my lap during the filming of this production, going over this target. He did a great job sitting on the floor next to me. Meow. <laughs>